What's that one story you've always wanted to tell, but no one has ever asked the right question? Story one. I was a huge slacker in high school. I wouldn't read reading assignments. I'd cheat on assignments and tests. I outright didn't do assignments if I didn't feel that the grade was worth the time, etc. Most of my teachers were aware of my laziness, and a few of them rightfully suspected the cheating aspect as well. My buddy was the same way. In my Spanish 1 class, we had Spanish nicknames just for fun. Mine was Tomas, and my buddy was Jose. This was the last period of each day, and our teacher would let us out before the bell would ring if we were to finish a class early. For each chapter in our textbook, we'd be given an assignment to make flashcards, on which one side would be one of the chapter's vocabulary terms, and the other side would be the English translation. Easy assignment, right? Well, it was worth such a few points that I couldn't be bothered to ever do it anyway. To grade them, she'd walk up and down the aisles between the desks, check for the stack of vocabulary cards, and move on to the next student. Nothing too thorough. It's the end of the period, and we're ready to leave early as usual, which she said that we could do after she checks our cards. She goes to check Jose's cards, and he actually has them done. I'm just stunned as much as he is. As she comes up to the aisle and with her back turned, Jose passes me his cards. As she approaches me, she asks, Tomas, do you have your vocabulary cards? Without even looking at me, expecting me to say no. Yes, ma'am, I responded, flashing the cards at her. She knows that something is up. Jose, where are your cards? Oh, I put them away, Mrs. Reyes. Do you mind pulling them out and showing them to me again? As Jose reaches underneath his desk for his binder, he of course doesn't say anything, but he doesn't have to. His facial expression says it all. I neither want to screw over my friend, nor want to get caught cheating. How severe would the punishment be? Our friend Jamie is eager to have his cards checked so that he can leave early. Completely unaware of what's going on, Jamie walks up to Mrs. Ray's from behind and asks if she'll check his cards. She turns around, and as she checks his cards, I give Jose his cards back. How do I get us out of this predicament? Mrs. Ray's turns back around and sees Jose with his cards. She then looks at me and says, Tomas, now where are your cards? Uh, I threw them away, I sheepishly answer. She gives me the all-too-familiar look of disappointment and asks, Why would you do that? I continue, Let's be honest. You and I both know that I won't use them anyway. Well, go get them and show them to me, please. This is it. We're about to get caught cheating. I walk to the trash can, brainstorming what to do, when I get to it and don't have any cards to show her. Do I shamefully act like they're suddenly missing from the trash can? Do I cut the bullcrap and try the honesty route? I don't know. I continue to the trash can and am flabbergasted at what I find. A stack of the chapter's vocabulary cards sitting neatly on top. No freaking way. I bring them back to my desk and show them to her. She looks to Jose and he flashes his cards to her as well. With a surprised tone, she says, I'm sorry that I ever doubted you two. She continues checking others' cards, and my buddy whispers, Whose cards are those? Dude, I have no freaking clue. The next day, I tell Jamie about what happened. He asks, You know what's funny? What? Those were my cards. I threw them away on my way out of class. Those cards were there for only seconds, and he had no idea that I needed him to put them there. What are the odds? Story 2. When I was a kid, we lived out in the country, and this very pregnant dog showed up on the farm. My stepdad told us not to feed it, because we already had more dogs than we needed, and if we fed her, she might stick around and have her puppies. So, of course, we secretly fed her. Just as my stepdad predicted, she had her puppies. We were thrilled, but knew we would have to hide them from my stepdad. He's not a cruel man, but he would have killed them. It might be hard for a lot of people to stomach, but we were living pretty hand-to-mouth, and he lived in the reality of food for dogs versus food for kids. We didn't have the money to support stray dogs' puppies, or even the money for gas to take them to the nearest shelter. After a few weeks of sneaking the mama dog food in the back of our feed shed, she stopped showing up. I worked on a dairy farm, so I started sneaking a little milk home in my saddlebags to feed the pups. Unfortunately, after a few weeks of that, my dad found them and was pretty irate over the disobedience and stealing milk. However, with much pleading, my sisters and I convinced him to let us keep them. He said he wasn't paying for shots or food. Fine by me. I could make it in a few weeks at the dairy to get this done. Unfortunately, orphan puppies have weak immune systems, and they all got parvo before I had the money. My sisters and I spent all day and night for several days trying to keep them alive with an eyedropper of water to keep them from getting dehydrated. One by one, each pup succumbed to the illness. Eventually, only a single one was left. 
and my stepdad, softened by our dedication, told us we could keep it if it lived. By some miracle, she lived. We named her Sassafras, and she was the cutest little corgi mix. One day, my stepdad calls to me and tells me to grab a towel. I come outside with a bath towel, and he shakes his head no, and sends me back to get a work towel. I come back out, and he looks at me as sad as a true blue cowboy could look, and says, I'm sorry, Pumpkin, I didn't know she was there. He had accidentally backed over the puppy's head when he put the farm truck into reverse. Sassafras had been sleeping in the shade behind the tire. He says, it's your dog, you need to handle this. I will never forget how surprisingly hot the insides of my puppy were as I scooped her into a towel to bury her. I was heartbroken. A month or so later, my stepdad comes into my room holding a baby possum in his hand next to his chest. I was perplexed because possums were banned on the farm because they killed chickens. I stood there confused, and he gruffly says, Well, are you going to take it or not? I cautiously reach out and grab it. It wasn't a possum, it was a blue healer puppy. She turned out to be the most amazing dog. I was blessed to have her in my life for almost 17 years, and could write a book on all the adventures we had together. I know my stepdad might get a lot of flack from the internet folks, but he was an amazing man who taught me so much, and offered very real and often hard lessons in the realities of life. I know I'm better for having him in my life. Story 3 my story is my crazy butt medical drama that happened. Wow, exactly a year and a half ago today. Everyone close to me knows about it, but it's weird talking to them about it too, because they all remember more than I do anyway, and it was a hard time for them too. Just need to talk it out sometimes, you know? So I woke up on May 1st, 2017, in excruciating pain. Some vomiting, so I thought I had some horrible food poisoning. That stopped after a couple of hours, but the pain just kept getting worse. It was in my entire abdomen, but mostly the upper right quadrant. Eventually, my then-boyfriend, now fiancé, convinced me to go to urgent care. They couldn't figure out what was wrong, thought maybe a gallbladder issue, and wanted me to get an ultrasound. Gave me some tramadol and sent me on my way to the ultrasound, except they couldn't get me in until 8 a.m. the next morning. I went the next morning, barely able to walk, and only thanks to the drugs and had the ultrasound. Now, usually the techs doing it aren't supposed to tell you anything, but she told me to expect their call soon. By 11 a.m., I had a phone call saying to go to the ER and tell them I was bleeding internally. At the ER, I get taken immediately back and a CT scan done. Over 10 tumors on my liver, two that are 5 centimeter diameter and one 10 centimeter diameter, one that had ruptured. Over the next 15 days, I spent in the hospital, still in excruciating pain, but on epic amounts of dialuric. After discovering I'm majorly allergic to morphine, that was an adventure. Multiple surgeons and doctors come talk to me, many scans done, biopsy done. Turns out they're hepatic adenomas caused likely by contraceptive use, but it took them forever to diagnose because, one, they're super rare, like an incidence rate of 0.004% of women on contraceptives get them, and two, they usually get one that is, at the largest, quarter size. I had to have a liver resection, removing half of my liver and the large bleeding tumor, which grew to 15 centimeters in the days I was in the hospital. The resulting surgery gave me a fabulous 13-inch scar across the middle of my abdomen and another eight days in the hospital following the surgery. It took about a month to be able to get out of my bed by myself and walk around for more than an hour or so, and really a full six months to get mostly back to normal. I had two embolizations in September 2017 and October 2017 to try and kill the two 5 centimeter tumors. Recently, I had pain again and discovered I had a new crop of tumors. Had another embolization in August 2018 to try to kill those. It's so annoying, and all of my family feel sorry for me all the time. They treat me like I'm so fragile when I used to be the strongest one of the kids, me, siblings, and cousins. I'm tired of being sick Maria and am more annoyed at my new tumors rather than upset by it. It's just a frustrating existence that it's hard to explain sometimes. Every time I think something gets better, a new annoying thing crops up related somehow to the tumors. I wish I could move past this point in my life. So thanks for listening to my rant. Too long didn't read, birth control pills gave me tumors and a giant scar. It's annoying and I'm over it. Story 4 Went on a date with a girl off Tinder, and we hit it off okay. No real chemistry, though, and figured I'd never see her again. Next night, she texts me and tells me she's at a bar near me for a birthday, and that I should come through. 
I figure why not and meet up and end up having a great time. She's super chatty and there's definitely something there that wasn't there the night before. After a few hours, she told me we should go back to my place. Why the hell not? We're talking the entire cab ride back and she's coherent and fine. We get to my place and she opens up her door and face plants onto the street. She has somehow become wasted during the 10 minute cab ride. At this point, she's incoherent and can't tell me where she lives. So I pick her up and walk her up to the block to my place, up three flights and settle her in my room. I don't feel okay sharing a bed with her when she's like this, so I leave her some water and put a trash can by the bed, just in case, and start to leave my room and head to the couch. I hear something as I get to the door and turn back in time to see her rolling off my bed, hit her neck on the corner of the trash can, and slam onto the floor. She then starts painting the walls like a sprinkler. I just watched it happen for a minute. I can't do anything. Once she stops, I pick her up and take her to the bathroom. She starts round two as I go back to my room and start cleaning up. After a few minutes, I went to check on her and she passed out in my toilet. At this point, she's completely immobile and I can't get her up. She has become 50 pounds heavier. So I grab a pillow, put her head in my lap, and resolve to sleep in the bathroom with her, worried my roommate might stumble upon her in the middle of the night. After a few hours of rough sleep, she wakes me up and tells me she needs to use the bathroom. I leave and let her do her thing. After about 15 minutes, I get worried and go to knock on the door, only to find it ajar. I push it open, only to be confronted with a wall of stink. She passed out on my toilet while taking the obscene crap. And her head is now jammed between the toilet back and my sink somehow. I managed to get her head free, but she is out. I can't do anything more. I can't get her up and I can't wipe her butt for her, so I leave her and go to the couch. After a few hours, I hear her get up and go to my bed. I check in on her and she is out, fully clothed in my bed and covered in puke still. Defeated, I go back to the couch. I have to work early in the morning, so I go to check in on her around 7 a.m., only to find she has gotten her period in my bed. I leave her $10, a t-shirt and jeans, and directions to the nearest laundromat. She texted me later, apologizing, and we went on another date and ended up sleeping together. I wonder what happened to her. Story 5. The play-by-play -play numbered list of the most inconvenient day of my life. Not the worst day, the most annoying and inconvenient and overall sucky. Number 1. Got woken up by a frantic phone call from my friend, asking me to drive him and his dog to the airport. I say yes because I'm stupid and nice. Number two, paving stone falls off a truck in front of me and punches a hole in my transmission. Car totaled. Number three, convince my other friend to pick me, friend one, and dog up on a whim and drive us to the airport and then me off to my parents' house to get a different car. Number four, arrive at the airport late and get stuck at the dog drop-off place because the crate friend one brought is too small. Dogs are not allowed on planes in such a small crate. Number five, except that now I have to watch friend one's dog for a week while he's gone because he fricked up and didn't plan anything out. Number six, friend two, dog, and I drove to my parents' house an hour away to pick up the car. Battery is kaput in the new car. Number seven, I spent the next two hours buying a new battery for my car, but now it's dark and I've wasted my whole day running errands and wrecking my car for my friend because I'm stupid and nice. Number eight, finally I started driving home with my dog from my parents' house. Number nine, halfway home, some pedestrians bolted out into the middle of the highway and I ended up swerving to not hit them, but it didn't work. Number 10, hit a woman with a car. Number 11, freak out, pull over, and run into the street to see if the woman is okay. Number 12, woman is fine, only managed to smack the side mirror, but struck out on drugs and very out of it and crying. Number 13, I feel terrible for hitting her, obviously, so I offer to drive her to wherever she needs to go because I'm stupid and nice. Number 14, she gets in and we drive to a trailer park to meet her boyfriend. She's on the phone the whole way and is complaining to her boyfriend about the crazy guy who hit her with her car. She did not realize at the time that I was that guy. Number 15, arrive at trailer park and immediately the dog manages to open the door and bolt out of the car. Number 16, without thinking, I ran after him. Not my dog, I ain't gonna lose it. And chased him for about 20 minutes. Number 17, realized that I left a meth head in my parents' car alone with the keys in the ignition. Number 18, freak the frick out again and run back to the car. Number 19, meth head is still there. I tell her I need to take the car and chase down this dog. She responds with, I'm sorry I ruined your day, very sarcastically. Number 20, lose my temper and tell her to get the F out of my car. Number 21, finally caught the dog after two plus hours of chasing him through a trailer park at night. 
Number 22, drive home and quietly drink myself silly from the crappy day I just had. Too long didn't read, I wrecked two cars in separate accidents, hit a woman with my car, and lost a dog that didn't belong to me, among other things, all in one day. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of this video, and have a wonderful day. Story 6. I had been working a job under the table and was let go. They gave me a month's pay in cash as severance. I was in shock and not having internet at the time, this was in dinosaur times before iPhones, went to a local internet cafe downtown run by the same company that runs EasyJet actually, to update friends and family on what happened. As I'm typing, I notice someone in my peripheral vision crouching down by my chair. I'd like to think the suddenness of having lost my job is why it takes a minute for it to click. I look down and my backpack is missing. I turn and see the guy heading upstairs to the ground floor and the exit. Not really thinking things through, I tear after the guy. I get to the top of the stairs and see him walking outside and have a moment of panic as he's going to hand my bag off to an accomplice. I manage to catch up to him and again, not really considering how badly this could backfire, grab him and start yelling at him. Fortunately, he didn't have a weapon, which was extremely lucky for me. Instead, he silently gave me my bag back and then just started to walk away up the street. I was so hyped up on adrenaline that I just stood there shaking for a while before I went back inside to finish up. When I got back to the chair, I double-checked that my personal stuff, like a digital camera, was still there because I had heard that sometimes they'll steal what they can from it first in case they get caught. Fortunately, everything was there, including the envelope with my severance in it. I had totally forgotten about it up until that point. It was basically the only time I've ever carried that much cash on me, almost two grand, and it happened to be the day I was almost robbed. Story 7. The Camera in the Woods In front of my townhouse building growing up was a wooded area with a massive drainage area. My friends and I were trying acid for our first time at my house when we were 17, standing outside and we see this little red light in the trees like a camera. Tell them we must be tripping because I would have noticed that before. It's too dark to go and investigate. Next day I didn't see the light and kind of forgot about it. Graduate, go to college, and come back for a visit. My parents' friend was living with them since the house was empty. Think my parents are swingers, by the way, since their kids are gone. Their friend and I are standing outside smoking a bowl because my parents dislike smoking. He asks if I've noticed the light in the woods. We went to investigate in the morning and saw nothing. No camera in the daylight, nor red light the next night. Three more years pass, and it turns out one of the neighbors was spying on his wife, who wasn't cheating, but became obsessed with spying and moved on to neighbors and co-workers through recordings. The camera was disappearing because he had a stringy pulley system thing from a tree to his window, and must have noticed people pointing to the trees towards his camera through live feed. It was a clear fishing line, and that's how no one noticed. My neighbor caught him because the pole system broke, and the camera fell into her car windshield. The cops were never called, just a lot of head ducking after that. Story 8 The story was one of those legends passed down at college. I knew a guy who swears he met the guy involved. He was a really shy guy, pretty unlucky with the ladies, never had a girlfriend, but really nice and hoping to meet a nice girl too. He went to a ball at another college and got himself pretty plastered, but managed to pick up and the girl asked him back to her room. He was over the moon and back they went. They made out in her bed for a while but unfortunately he's a bit too wasted and falls asleep. When he wakes up, he's naked and the girl is nowhere to be seen. He gets up and tries to find his clothes and they're gone too. Hungover and utterly miserable, he realizes he's been duped. She never liked him. The whole thing was just a chance to pull some cruel joke. He wraps the sheet around himself and prepares to make the dash back to his own college. But he's feeling heartbroken and decides that it's time for revenge first. No one is going to make a fool of him like this. He makes sure the door is locked, then squats on her desk and lays an enormous, steaming, booze-fueled sloppy turd all over her homework. Satisfied with his work, he leaves, where he runs into her in the corridor, bringing back his freshly washed clothes with coffee and bagels for them both. Story 9 I live in a small, rural town. When I was seven, my parents let my older sister and I ride our bikes about three and a half miles into town to get lunch at the only restaurant in town, which my mom's cousin owns. I didn't realize how long of a three and a half mile ride was and was hot and tired and crabby and burned my tongue on my burger, so I threw a fit and refused to ride my bike home. A stranger overheard my sister and I arguing about this and offered me a ride home. He said he could just put my bike in the back of his truck and everything would be fine. 
My sister agreed because she didn't want to have to call my parents to come pick us up, and she was tired of whining, and also she was 10 years old and dumb. I realized on the drive home that I hadn't given the man directions or told him my name, but he somehow knew my name and where I lived. He dropped me off at home, helped me put my bike in the garage, and then drove down the road to go visit my grandparents. It turns out the man was my grandpa's brother, one of 12 siblings. He recognized me because I looked just like my mom did at that age. Story 10. I accidentally stole a car. I had just gotten off work, I was working two jobs at the time, and I got barely any sleep. I walked out and got into my car, started it up, and started driving home. I didn't realize something was wrong until I couldn't find my aux cords, and then I started realizing that there were things in the car that were not mine, like the child's seat in the back. I was an 18-year-old with no kids. I flip a U-turn and bust my butt back to work to hopefully get the car back before its owner notices it's gone. I didn't. Cops were there, and I was very quickly arrested. Owner dropped charges only after three things were done. Number one, I showed my keys, unlocked, and started her car, then pointed to my car, which was the same model, color, and year. Number two, one of my coworkers vouched for the fact that the customer parked in the spot I almost always parked in. Number three, camera footage was pulled for the past nine days I had worked, showing that seven of those days I parked in that spot, and the other two I parked close to it. Story 11. So my family used to do a crap ton of road trips. We would drive about 14 hours every major holiday to see family. On the way there is this wonderful Italian restaurant, amazing food, but the portions were always so huge that we would never finish the food. Well, we had leftovers on the drive home, and my sister decided she was hungry. Also, she wasn't wearing pants. Don't remember why, but she wasn't. Well, she was hungry, so she decided to eat some of the leftovers. What does she do? She goes and spills the entire carton of leftover pasta onto her underwear. We all start screaming because we have nothing to clean the pasta up with, so my sister decides to use her underwear to clean up the spaghetti. Well, now we have spaghetti in underwear, which isn't very helpful, so what do we do with the spaghetti underwear? We throw it out the window. The underwear hit a car and splatters the windshield with spaghetti. I'm really glad we don't go on many road trips anymore. Story 12 I was with two of my friends around midnight. We were in high school at the time and were going to pull into the parking lot of a park to smoke weed while sitting in the car. We had been here several times before and it was private enough where nobody ever bothered us. Tonight we pull in and see a group of people just walking across the parking lot from one side to the other and into the pitch black field. They weren't together, but almost 30 people throughout the parking lot were just walking in the same direction. They looked like they were from all walks of life a construction worker, kids, a grandma, all different looking people. As we pulled into the lot and my friend's car shined his headlights on some of the people, nobody turned around to look at us. They just kept walking without breaking eye contact with the field. Too long didn't read, I went to a park to smoke weed with some friends and came across a cults or possibly group of zombies. Story 13. Was walking to the mailbox late one morning because I was expecting something important. The mailbox is roughly a half mile from my house and on the way I have to pass a bus stop. I was moseying along when I saw the bus pull up, but I didn't think much of it because it's hot and I'm tired and I'm not getting on the bus, I'm just going to the mailbox. Well, the bus waits and waits and waits. The bus is not leaving without me. Do I walk past the bus and ignore the situation? Do I thank the driver for waiting but explain that I'm just getting the mail? No, I get on the freaking bus. What should I do next? I missed the stop I was planning to get off on, Next stop, next town over. Bus only comes by once an hour. And that is how I ended up drinking tequila in a Walmart parking lot at noon. Never did make it to the mailbox. Story 14. We went on a lad's night out and somehow two random Scottish birds ended up coming back to our house with like 14 lads. We're all just drinking, having a laugh, when someone points out that the one bird is tossing my mate off under a blanket. We all make a joke about it, call them out on it, and tell them to go somewhere private. So he takes her to my bathroom. He Fs her on the bathroom floor and they come back downstairs after the deed is done. I go up to take a pee and there's a watery substance all over the floor. So I ask what the F is on my floor. She goes bright red. He starts laughing and says she's a squirter mate. I was like what the F dude clean it up. No mate is his response. So I went upstairs and cleaned this Scottish bird's jizz off my floor with a mop. Went back downstairs with the mop, walked straight up to him, and slapped him across the face with the mop. Story 15. I saw a black and white cat club, as in a club whose members were the neighborhood black and white cats. 
I happened to glance across the street one night and saw about five or six cats heading for a neighbor's backyard. I recognized all the cats. None of them had the same owner. There was the grumpy one owned by an old lady two houses down, the one that lived on the other side of the block, the probable stray, etc. Then I looked closer and saw my new little black and white kitten with them. What really made this stick out to me was that it was only black and white ones, none of the other cats in the area. And I know there were other differently colored cats in the area. I'm still scratching my head over what that was. Welcome party? Gang meeting? Cult initiation ritual? Has anyone else ever seen cats do this? Story 16. My boss graduated from the same school I'm currently a senior at, and one time he told me about how he was accidentally involved in a bomb threat. So he and his buddies would play football on the school field when school wasn't in session, and one time there were people doing a photo op on the field, and they left their camera case. My boss, thinking it would be a kind gesture, brought the case to the main entrance so the people could come back for it. Next time he was in school, he was waiting in the cafeteria for the first bell to ring, but staff told them to stay in the cafeteria. Apparently, they thought the camera case was a bomb when it was clearly not. Story 17 One time in second grade, we were taking a state standardized test. That means all day, no talking, and filling in bubbles. One kid who sat across from me, who I haven't heard say a word all year, this was the end of the year, stands up in the middle of the test in complete silence and says in an almost shout, Has anyone seen Aladdin? I replied, The movie? The kid says, What movie? in quite the inquisitive tone, and sits back down and goes back to taking the test as if nothing just happened. Everyone was shocked, including the teacher. No one said a word after that. Weirdest moment of my life. Story 18. Sixth grade, I had hit a major growth spurt, so most of my clothes didn't fit, and my family couldn't afford new ones. Once winter came around, the only jacket I had that I could still fit in, even a bit, was much too thin to be of any use. My teacher noticed, and I walked into class one morning to see a big, fluffy winter coat on the back of my chair and a chicken soup for the soul book on my desk. Her kindness still makes my eyes water, even almost two decades later. Ms. Robertson, if you're reading this, thank you. I never forgot. Story 19. A few weeks ago, I was visiting Los Angeles. I'm from Spain, but I'm fluent in English. I needed help finding directions to a certain address. I'm downtown at this point, on foot. I ask a guy on the street if he knows where the address is. He responds with, No hablo inglés, which means I don't speak English in Spanish. Being from Spain, I understood him and asked him again in Spanish. Then he says in crystal clear English, Dude, I just don't want to talk to anyone. Leave me alone. Story 20. While in Iraq, we were sent on various missions. One night, the Iraqi police came to us terrified. They claimed that there was a giant hairy monster eating Iraqi police. They asked us to go hunt it down. We got our gear and patrolled southern Fallujah for six hours. After the patrol was over, we were informed that we were hunting the Iraqi equivalent of Bigfoot. So there we were hunting Bigfoot in Iraq. God bless America. Story 21. Once, when I was eight years old, I was running through the forest. Suddenly, I got pulled back by something. I didn't know what, but it didn't hurt. I called for my dad. When he came, he gasped and said that I shouldn't move. He then proceeded to remove a fishing hook that was in my skin right next to my eye. One more millimeter to the left, and I would have been blind with one eye for the rest of my life. Story 22. I work with a guy who ended up in the ER after an intimate night with his girlfriend. They tried the back door, and apparently she had eaten jalapenos. A jalapeno seed went into his... Hmm, well, he was in a lot of pain. This is what he's known for at work now. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.